Hi. Today I want to talk with you briefly about a first century Jewish group never mentioned in the New Testament, namely the Essenes. Now, why would we want to talk about a group never mentioned in the New Testament? Well, while it is true that they are never mentioned, their influence may be more pronounced than first appears. First, a bit of context. To be sure, while it is true that they were something of a fanatical monastic group, it's important to keep in mind that mainstream Judaism of the first century also regarded the Jesus movement, only later to be called Christianity, likewise as a fanatical and even monastic group by some. It's important when reading the New Testament to keep in mind that we've left our 21st century world and entered the world of first century Judaism with all of its diversity. Otherwise, we run the risk of reading back onto the New Testament our 21st century Gentile perspectives and forget that Jesus and his disciples and all of the first Christians were in fact Jews. The Essenes were one of the few Messianic Jewish groups in Palestine in the first century, that is, actively looking for the coming of the Messiah. And so following the destruction of the temple in AD 70 and the scattering of the Jewish people in the wake of the onslaught by General Titus and the 10th Roman legion that invaded Palestine, many of the Essenes, having no other place to go, appear to have joined the young Christian messianic movement precisely because they found in Christianity some of their concerns addressed. There even may be traces of that in the New Testament. Let me explain. While it is true that the, the Essenes are never mentioned in the New Testament, they may be alluded to. The Essenes at Qumran appear to have had a common community chest from which the entire community derived benefit with no private ownership of property permitted. Sounds a bit like early, the early Christian community described in Acts chapter 4, doesn't it? And then in Acts chapter 9, verse 2, we learned that the name of the earliest Christians used to describe themselves was the way. They only started to be called Christians sometime later when the movement had branched out to Antioch. See Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Now we know from the Dead Sea Scrolls, the rule of the community, that the Essene community also talked about themselves as the way. Moreover, in Acts chapter 6, verse 7, following the ministry of Stephen and the Hellenists, Luke provocative, provocatively says, and I quote, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith, end quote. What priests would these have been? The Sadducees? Certainly not. The only group of priests who may have found some commonality with the Messianic movement that coalesced around Jesus of Nazareth would have been the Essenes. James Charlesworth of Princeton suggests that following the destruction of the temple in AD 70 and the obliteration of the Sadducees and the Zealots, the priestly group of surviving Messianic Jews, the Essenes, would have looked around for a like-minded group to join. And the only Jewish group that still believed in the Messiah was the early Christian group. And so as a result, Charlesworth and some others speculate that perhaps some Essenes might have become Christians. And it is to this that Luke may be alluding in Acts chapter 6, verse 7, when he says, and a great many priests became believers. Is he right? I don't know, but it's plausible. And then finally this. According to Josephus, during the time of Herod the Great, the Essenes lived in the city of Jerusalem as well as out in the Jordan River Valley at Kirbet Qumran. Archaeologists have corroborated Josephus in that they have discovered a gate in the ancient city of Jerusalem near Mount Zion dating from the time of Herod the Great which was known by Jewish sources of the time as the Gate of the Essenes. Now, this could have implications for understanding a rather enigmatic passage of Scripture 
found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14. In giving instructions to his disciples about making preparations for them to eat Passover, Jesus, according to Mark, sent two of his disciples into Jerusalem with these instructions. Go into the city, he said, and a man will meet you there carrying a water jar. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room, Catalima in Greek, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. And he shall then show you a large upper room, anageon in Greek, already furnished and prepared. There you should prepare the Passover for us." End quote. Now, this passage is striking for several reasons. First, how would two disciples know which particular man carrying a water jar to follow in the city the size of Jerusalem in the first century? <laughs> well, the answer is that men in that culture didn't carry water jars. Women did. Unless, of course, they were a monastic community in which there were no women, like the Essenes. A man carrying a water jar would have stood out in that setting like the proverbial sore thumb. Secondly, Jesus told them to say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I am to eat the Passover with my disciples? The Essenes referred to their leader as the teacher. And then third, finally, the gate of the Essenes on Mount Zion is almost precisely located in the same place where tradition has preserved that Jesus celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples, the upper room, cynical, in Latin, anageon, in Greek. For a fuller treatment of this, see my book, Where Jesus Walked, A Spiritual Journey Through the Holy Land, published by Judson Press. Now, does all of this mean that Jesus and his disciples were Essenes? No, of course not. But it may mean that perhaps Jesus and his disciples, like the Essenes, were perceived in their culture and day as something of a messianic protest group of obedient Jews looking to purify a corrupt Jewish establishment. It also means that perhaps at least some of Jesus' followers, like the master of the house who hosted Jesus, and his disciples for Passover may well have been converts to Jesus' messianic movement from the Essene movement. <laughs> At least it's something to think about, and it points out just how important it is to know something about these groups before you try to interpret the New Testament. Until next time, take care. God bless.